most of you know by now, music is just everything to me. And when I filmed the video where I shared my most played songs with you all, it was actually my favorite video that I've made so far. And I, that's kind of where this idea was born. I kind of had an idea for a whole new video series, or I guess I should really say audio series. And what I would like to do is pick one musician a week and read a condensed version of their biography. And so the very first artist I'd like to feature is Keith Whitley. I've been listening to his 16 Biggest Hits album nonstop for the last couple of weeks. I kind of get in these moods where I only want to listen to certain people or certain songs, and I will listen to them over and over and over again. I mean, it's it's somewhat ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I've been doing with his music lately. I just haven't been able to stop listening to it. Um, my very first memories of listening to Keith Whitley are from when I was, gosh, I think about four or five years old and living in Ohio. And he always reminded me of my dad, and I'm pretty sure that's what originally kind of drew me to him. I remember watching his music videos on TV, and at one point, very on, I actually thought he was my dad. <laughs> um, I was really young when he passed away, but I remember, I still remember today, like the exact day that it happened. I remember sitting in front of the TV, and I was watching uh, country music videos, and there used to be a channel that played country music videos pretty much nonstop. I think it was before CMT, it was, I don't remember the name of it, but um, I was watching that channel, and I was sitting there in front of the TV, and they announced that he had passed away, and I remember just sitting there and staring at the TV, and at that time, I didn't really understand what was going on. I must have been, gosh, probably five years old at the time. And I just remember hearing them say it passed away, but not really understanding because they were showing him right there on the TV screen. And at some point, I started crying, and my mom heard me, and she came into the room. Um, I remember her asking me what was wrong, and I relayed to her exactly what had been said on TV. And I'm pretty sure that she was sh somewhat shocked because uh, she turned the TV off and then tried her best to explain to me how I could still see him on TV even though he had died. And thinking back on that now, that was actually my first experience with death. I'd never been exposed to it up until that point. And that's probably why like that entire memory stands out so much to me, even now, you know, 25 years later. And so... I suppose with that, I will start reading um, the biography of Keith Whitley. Jackie Keith Whitley, born July 1st, 1954, known professionally as Keith Whitley, was an American country music singer. During his short career, Whitley charted 19 singles on the Billboard country charts. Born in Ashland, Kentucky, Whitley grew up in nearby Sandy Hook. Whitley began his career in 1970, performing in Ralph Stanley's band. Establishing himself as a lead singer in bluegrass music, Whitley moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 1983 and began his recording career there. His first top 20 country hit single, Miami, Miami, was released in 1986. While touring for his album, L.A. to Miami, he married country singer Lori Morgan. In 1988, his first three singles from his studio album, Don't Close Your Eyes, the title song, When You Say Nothing at All, and I'm No Stranger to the Rain, were number one hits. Several years of alcoholism severely deteriorated his health, and he died in 1989 at the age of 34. His later two singles, I Wonder Do You Think of Me and It Ain't Nothing, were released after his death. Whitley continues to influence an entire generation of singers and songwriters. Okay, so that was just kind of an overview, and now I'm going to, I guess,
guess, go more in depth with um, his biography. Whitley was born to Faye, editor of the Elliott County News, and Elmer Whitley, an electrician in Ashland, Kentucky, but was raised 46 miles away in Sandy Hook and attended Sandy Hook High School. He had two brothers, Randy and Dwight, and a sister, Mary. The Whitley family has lived in the Elliott County area since the 1840s. As a teenager in Sandy Hook, Whitley and his friends would pass the time drinking bootleg bourbon and racing their cars down mountain roads at dangerous speeds. Whitley was once in a car whose driver attempted to round a curve at 120 miles per hour. The car wrecked, killing his friend and almost breaking Whitley's neck. In another incident, he drove his car off a 120-foot cliff into a frozen river, escaping with only a broken collarbone. In 1969, he performed in a musical contest with his brother Dwight on five-string banjo. Ricky Skaggs was also in the contest. Skaggs and Whitley hit it off right away and befriended each other. As teenagers, Whitley and Skaggs were discovered in Fort Gay, West Virginia by Ralph Stanley, who was 45 minutes late due to a flat tire. Ralph was in a bad mood, and when he opened the door to the club, he heard the Stanley brothers playing on what he figured was a jukebox. He said it was two young gentlemen who sounded just like me and Carter in the early days. The two soon joined Ralph's band. Whitley also played with J.D. Crow and the New South in the mid-70s. During this period, he established himself as one of the most versatile and talented singers in bluegrass. He moved to Nashville in 1983 to pursue a country music career and soon signed a record deal with RCA Records. Whitley's first solo album, A Hard Act to Follow, was released in 1984 and featured a more mainstream country style. While Whitley was working hard to achieve his own style, the songs he produced were inconsistent. Critics regarded the album as too erratic. L.A. to Miami, released in 1986, would give him his first top 20 country hit single, Miami, Miami. The song was followed by three more hit songs. The album also included, on the other hand, and nobody in his right mind would have left her. On the other hand, was pitched to Whitley before Randy Travis released the song as a single, and when Whitley's version wasn't released as a single, Travis released his in 1986, as did George Strait, with nobody in his right mind would have left her. During his tour to promote L.A. to Miami, he met and began a romantic relationship with country music singer Lori Morgan. The pair were married in November 1986, and they had their only child, a son, Jesse Keith Whitley, in June 1987. Whitley also adopted Lori Morgan's daughter, Morgan, from her first marriage. During the new recording sessions in 1987, Whitley started feeling that the songs he was doing were not up to his standards, so he approached RCA and asked if the project of 15 songs could be shelved. He asked if he could assert himself more with the songs and in production. The new album, titled Don't Close Your Eyes, was released in 1988, and the album sold extremely well. The album contained one of the many songs that Whitley had a, had a hand in writing in his years at Tree Publishing. It's All Coming Back to Me Now. Also on the album was a remake of I Never Go Round Mirrors, and the song became a huge hit at Whitley's concerts. The first three singles from the album, When You Say Nothing At All, I'm No Stranger to the Rain, and the title cut all reached number one on Billboard magazine's country charts during the fall of 1988 and the winter of 1989, with the title track Don't Close Your Eyes being ranked as Billboard's number one country song of 1988. Shortly thereafter, I'm No Stranger to the Rain also earned Whitley his first and only Country Music Association Award as a solo artist. In early 1989, Whitley approached Sony Music Nashville chairman with the intention of releasing I Never Go Around Mirrors as a single. 
it was suggested that Whitley record something new and more upbeat. The result was a song Whitley had optioned for his previous album called I Wonder Do You Think of Me and was to result in his next album release. Whitley was a longtime alcoholic who started drinking early in his career at bluegrass gigs long before he was legally allowed to drink alcohol. Many times he had tried to overcome his alcoholism but failed and his pre-existing depression made it more challenging for him to quit. Whitley preferred to drink alone, making it difficult for anyone to detect that he had a problem. According to Lori Morgan, she tried to conceal all alcoholic beverages from him at the home they shared. Whitley had lost both his father, Elmer, in 1987, and his brother, Randy, in an October 1983 motorcycle accident five years before his own death. On the morning of May 9, 1989, after a weekend of drinking and partying, Whitley awoke and spoke with his mother briefly on the phone. He was then visited by his brother-in-law, Lane Palmer, and the two had coffee and were planning a day of golf and lunch, after which Whitley had planned to start writing songs for Lori Morgan and himself to record when she returned from her concert tour. Palmer departed at approximately 8.30 a.m., informing Whitley to be ready to leave within an hour. Upon returning, Palmer found Whitley face down on his bed, fully clothed. The official cause of death was determined to be alcohol poisoning. Whitley was just 34 years old. The day after his death, Music Row was lined with black ribbons in memory of Whitley. He is buried in the Spring Hill Cemetery outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It has long been speculated that Whitley's death may not have been directly caused by his recklessness or alcoholism, but that he may have been a victim of premeditated misconduct. In 1989, forensic pathologist and then chief medical examiner stood trial for several cases of forensic fraud which led to the misdiagnosis of several deceased patients and possibly the conviction of innocent people under suspicion of murder. Subsequently, the man who originally laid claim that Whitley's death was solely by alcohol poisoning has been relieved of his license to practice pathology. Despite Whitley's death, his influence on country music has persisted long after his death. At the time of his death, he had just finished working on his fourth and final studio album, I Wonder Do You Think of Me? The album was released three months after his death on August 1st, 1989. The album produced two more number one hits with the title track and It Ain't Nothing, I'm Over You also saw in the top five in early 1990, reaching number three. Two new songs were added to greatest hits. The first, Tell Lori I Love Her, was written and recorded at home by Whitley for Morgan, originally intended as a work tape for Whitley's friend Curtis Mr. Harmony Young to sing at Whitley's wedding. The second was Till a Tear Becomes a Rose, a 1987 demo taken from Tree that originally featured harmony vocals by childhood friend Ricky Skaggs. Lori Morgan, with creative control and license to Whitley's namesake, recorded her voice alongside Whitley's and released it as a single, which rose to number 13 and won the 1990s CMA Award for Best Vocal Collaboration. RCA also released a compilation of performance clips, interviews, and some previously unreleased material under the title Kentucky Bluebird. The album produced hits for Whitley as well, including a duet with Earl Thomas Conley named Brotherly Love, which peaked at number two in late 1991. In 1994, Whitley's widow, Lori Morgan, organized several of Whitley's friends in bluegrass and some of the big names in country music at the time to record a tribute album to Whitley. The album, Keith Whitley, a tribute album, was released in September 1994 via BNA. It included covers of Whitley songs from artists such as Alan Jackson, Diamond Rio, and Ricky Skaggs. The album also included four previously unreleased tracks recorded by Whitley in 1987, one of which had Morgan dubbed in as a duet partner. The album also included two original songs, Little Boy Lost, co-written and sung by Darren Norwood, and a voice
Still Rings True, a multi-artist song. Alison Krauss's rendition of When You Say Nothing At All was released as a single from the album, reaching number three on the country charts in 1995. In 1995, the album Wherever You Are Tonight was released, produced by Lori Morgan, featuring restored demos of 1986 through 1988 with CRISPR 1990s recording techniques and a full orchestra. The album and single of the same name both did very well on the Billboard and R&R charts and brought super hits and The Essential Keith Whitley in 1996. The Essential contained the remastered and long since unavailable LP and Whitley's debut the sixth track, A Hard Act to Follow, and a scrapped song from 1986's L.A. to Miami, I Wonder Where You Are Tonight. Alright, so that is the condensed version of Keith Whitley's autobiography. Um, the, I just gathered this material from the internet, so if any of this is incorrect, I apologize. Please feel free to um, add to this or to correct anything that is wrong in the comments below. I hope that you all enjoyed this, and I will be seeing you all in a new video very soon.